Hey, my name is Ian Jennings. Welcome to our overview of the Eon framework, which is a collection of front-end charting libraries brought to you by PubNub. The tool we're going to be looking at today is called PubNub Rickshaw. Rickshaw is a real-time time series graphing library for JavaScript. And what that means is it allows you to chart out any sort of time series data in a variety of ways. You can see on the um, animation here a whole bunch of different um, layouts. You've got line graphs, bar graphs, area, percentage-based value, charts, smoothing, scatter plots, a whole bunch of different stuff. And PubNub Rickshaw is a plugin that allows you to use PubNub as a data source for any of these charts. This is the Rickshaw homepage. Rickshaw is a Shutterstock project. And it's based upon D3. It's basically just a bunch of extensions that allow you to do things like add rendering engines, legends, hovers, range selectors, all those pretty things I just showed you before. And what PubNub Rickshaw is, is another extension that plugs right in acting as a data source. So you can use all of the Rickshaw features and PubNub as the incoming data. This is the Rickshaw kitchen sink demo. And it basically shows you all the features available within Rickshaw, including bar charts, line charts, scatter plot, and the different rendering engines like stream, percent value, step, smoothing. And you can also drill down into the time series. So what I'm going to show you today is how you can apply PubNub Rickshaw into the Rickshaw Kitchen Sync demo as the basis for your own custom real-time graph. We'll start with the simplest Rickshaw demo. This is the simplest graph you can make with Rickshaw, and instead of using local data, it gets data over the internet through PubNub. This example is available within the PubNub Rickshaw uh, repository. So if you just clone the repository and go to examples, PubNub simple, you'll find the source. And at the top, you'll see four script includes. The first is the remote PubNub script. This allows communication over PubNub data stream network. Then there is the vendor D3 script. This is distributed with Rickshaw and powers the Rickshaw framework. Then there's a the Rickshaw framework which is created by Shutterstock and makes our graphs look all beautiful. Then there is the Rickshaw fixture PubNub. This is the secret sauce. This allows us to connect our Rickshaw framework to PubNub and get our data from somewhere else other than the local source. The first div here is a chart. This is the target element. Uh, you can see it get targeted over here. This is where our chart will be rendered. And this is how we initiate a Rickshaw graph. If you've used Rickshaw before, you'll see this is really one of the most basic examples I can show you. It has a width, a height, define some things like stroke to preserve the history, stuff like that. And here are the series data definitions. So normally in Rickshaw, you might see that these data arrays are full. When you use PubNub Rickshaw, we'll actually populate this data from the PubNub history. So you don't need to add the data here to begin with. We call the render function. This will render the graph on the page into the target element, which is here. And then we have the PubNub Rickshaw fixture. So this is, again, what we're really talking about here is the PubNub Rickshaw extension. And the extension has a few configuration options, but the most important ones are channel. So this is the PubNub channel that we'll be listening for data on and graph. So graph, um, this graph variable matches this graph here, which also matches var graph up here. So we're all talking about the same graph, and you just plug the graph into the fixture, and it'll start up, collect the data from this channel, and graph it. So here we have, so here, here we have at the bottom of this example a short piece of code that'll show you how to publish data over the PubNet network into the chart that we just built. So this script ex exists on the same page, but it could exist anywhere. It could be on a Node.js server, it could be on another front-end page, it could be on an iPhone app, a Python server, it doesn't matter. It'll still go over the internet, and I can show you those network requests later. So we defined the channel earlier in the PubNub or Rickshaw fixture, 
and the graph. And so what we're going to do now is start publishing data to that channel. On the bottom of this page is a short code example of how you can publish data over the PubNub network into that channel. So what's happening is the fixture is actually subscribing to the PubNub network and this channel waiting for data to come through. When the data comes through, it gets applied into the graph and appended to these data arrays, and the graph re-renders itself. Down below, we have that the published code, which will send the data to the graph. This is not part of the rickshaw library. It's merely an example of how to use PubNub in another location to publish data over the network. So we'll start with the PubNub init call, and we add the subscribe key and publish key demo. These are the demo-based API keys. If you're using PubNub, you'll want to fill them in with your own keys, but if you're just getting started, they're perfectly fine. And the, the PubNub rickshaw fixture actually uses these keys by default, so you don't have to supply them. We'll get into a more in-depth example of how to define your own keys in the rickshaw fixture, but for now, they'll just use the demo keys. And what we have here is a set interval loop that will publish data over to that same rickshaw channel. So you notice that these strings match. And this is how PubNub knows which channel to get the data from and which channel to publish it to. So when we publish that data here, you can see the y-axis and the x-axis. It'll fill into this chart magically using the PubNub fixture. So if you notice that the series is an array with two values, the first is an object and the second is an object. So we're going to match that array down here under the y-axis. And so this math random times 99 will actually fill in to the cat's array. And this math random, the second one, will fill into the dog's array. And they'll both be grouped under this x-axis, which is labeled as the time. It publishes every second. So every second, we're going to get a random value from 0 to 99 logged into the cat's and dog's graph. So if you go back to our example, you can see that happening here. We have cats and dogs and two random values being output every second. If we dive into the network code, you'll see those publishes happening right here, see? We can also use the PubNub Chrome extension to monitor those messages. And you can see the X and Y data being subscribed to here. So really quickly, I'm going to show you how you can take this front-end code to publish data to our rickshaw graph and turn it into back-end code so you can monitor something like Node.js memory usage, user signing up, things like that. So I'm just going to start by copying this code. I'll load the terminal and Chrome so you can see the output. And we're going to touch app.js. So now we have app.js. We're going to npm install PubNub. This will allow us to use PubNub on the back end. Then I'm just going to edit app.js. We're going to require PubNub. Now we have the library within the script. And I'm just going to paste the same exact code from the front end. I'm going to add a small little log here to show you that stuff is happening. And save the file. Now when you run node app.js, we're getting publishes. You can see the data appear here in the PubNub Chrome console and it coming in through the graph. Now if we look at the source of this, this is the same exact example I showed you earlier, but we've removed the front end code. So this is actually being published over the PubNub network and being retrieved by the graph on the other end. To get a full featured real-time graph with the rickshaw library, we'll plug PubNub in in the exact same way as we did with the simple library. This is the source to the full kitchen sink demo. 
You can see there's a lot more stuff going on here, including a bunch of CSS files. You'll see D3 up here like usual, two jQueries with a jQuery no conflict, and then all these rickshaw extensions. Now, PubNub rickshaw is another one of these extensions. We're just putting it below here to have it stand out. You also see the PubNub script include here that powers the PubNub extension. And more or less the same exact HTML from the rickshaw example. And again, a really simil similar publish script here on the bottom. Now again, this could be running on Node, it could be running on the same page, it doesn't matter. But let's go into the configuration. So there's a couple more things here in the PubNub fixture. So you'll see I supplied a subscribe key here. It's still demo. You'll want to plug that in with your own subscribe key if you're a PubNub user. The channel name is different than the other one. This way we don't have conflicts publishing more data than necessary to the smaller graph. We have history true enabled. I'll get into that in a second. There's the graph again. Connect. Connect is a function that fires when PubNub has connected and, re and initiated. And we're, there's a limit here. So limit and history work together. Limit is the number of messages, the number of x axis points that will be displayed on the graph once that limit is reached. The last one is popped off and a new one is, append is appended. It's more or less a buffer. And history will use the PubNub history function to fill in the last limit number of x axis points when the graph loads. So this means that not only are you publishing data over PubNub, but PubNub is storing that data on the back end and you can retrieve it again when you load the page next instead of starting fresh every time. So in this case, we're starting with 50. It's also worth mentioning the init function. So this function fires when all the data has been loaded from PubNub. This is important because a lot of the fixtures expect data to be present when they initiate. So if we initiate the graph before the extension has data to use, it'll start breaking things. So what I added was a callback that fires when the PubNub data has been initiated. This way, the fixtures are happy and nothing breaks. And so you'll see that there's this init function here under connect, and it's defined up here. And all it does is takes all of the extensions and initiates them when the data is ready. This way, nothing breaks. More specifically, you can it, it applies to this empty array here. Those fixtures are looking for data within this array, and it just doesn't exist at the beginning. So now let's take a look at the full-fledged example here. It's gotten very purple as we've been playing around. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by limit or buffer. So when I refresh, it's going to load the, a, the actual last x messages. So all that purple is here. And since we refresh the page, the publishing source has changed. And we're seeing new data come through here. You can change that limit function. So I can make it say 500. It'll probably take a little bit longer to load. But we can see a full history. All right, there we go. So this is the full history of all the data that we've published. And we can drill down, see, and find that place where we refreshed. That's it for the overview of PubNub Rickshaw. You can find the full documentation on GitHub under github.com slash pubnub slash pubnub dash rickshaw. We have a documentation of all the parameters supplied on initiation. The simple example I just demonstrated. And of course, the big kitchen sink demo. They're located within the rickshaw folder, examples. And there, those are the two pages that we just went over. Rickshaw is a Shutterstock library and copyright 2011-2013 by Shutterstock Images. Mm -hmm.